Welcome to the Mouthpiece, and today is the first week of September, and I am on my way. This is going to be our last show for a month here on the Mouthpiece as we're heading out to Germany for the world's, for a German, uh, German poker tournament sponsored by Full Tilt Poker. We're going to the World Series of Poker Europe on the 18th of September. I'll be coming back on October 3rd, so I'll be out of here. See you later. So we're going to talk about what I'm doing. We're going to be talking about uh, my, my week in internet poker. It was a long, long week, which ended up coming out on top. We're going to talk about Poker Savvy Plus videos coming on out. I had made one the other day. It got ruined. You don't want to even know what I've been going through. We're going to talk about my hand of the week, the main event on the World Series of Poker on ESPN that just started airing. We're going to talk about some things on there and uh, whatever else. And your phone calls on the mouthpiece. Welcome back to the mouthpiece. And this is your host with the most, Mikey Matiso. And um, as you all know, uh, from the top of the show, I say this is going to be our last show until I get back on October 3rd. Uh, so it'll be the first week in October where the mouthpiece will be back. And I apologize for that, but this is the time of year where we do a lot of traveling. And uh, unfortunately, I have to go to Europe and make some money. So uh, Full Tilt Poker is uh, running a... Tournaments at $8,500 euro buy-in in Germany, uh, supposedly around 120, 130 players. Uh, I heard the field is really juicy, so I'm really looking forward to this tournament. After we get done with that, uh, me and all the Full Tilt boys are going to be playing a million-dollar cash game in London, and... Uh, it's going to be a real big cash game on live online, or not live online, live uh, uh, televised all over Europe. Uh, so there'll be a lot of YouTube clips from that, and it'll be all televised all over Europe. So we'll be doing that on the 15th and the 16th of September. And then it's off to the World Series of Poker Europe, in which I'll be playing all four events out there. And really looking forward to being there, even though uh, I am missing, between all this, I am missing the Borgata tournament, which I don't want to miss. Uh, and I'm also missing possibly the Aruba tournament in Aruba, the, the uh, ultimate bet tournament, uh, which I really wanted to go to because uh, they're guaranteeing a million for first, and uh, it's going to be all internet players and no pros. So um, uh, if I get knocked out of the full, t or if I get knocked out of the uh, main event of the World Series of Poker Europe, I will probably be flying straight over there uh, for day one of that. But if not, uh, which I hope I'm not, I'll be staying there and trying to win the World Series of Poker main event. And that's what's on the news for me on the horizon. Uh, my week in internet poker, uh, I don't know if anybody of you have been watching as I put in God knows how many hours. I don't even want to know how many hours I played this week because I played way too many hours. But uh, I uh, came back home uh, from out of town uh, about from the WBT boot camp about 11 days ago and it took me 11 days and now I'm about 40,000 winner for those 11 days uh, and I rode the quarter million up and down roller coaster to do it um, the games have been good I've been playing really well uh, it was just a real real struggle and I put in uh, quite too many 24 hour sessions and I don't plan to do too many in the future so hopefully I will stop myself from doing this and not do this as much uh, but overall, it's, it's been a good week uh, in online poker, and I feel like I'm playing really well, and hopefully these games will stay together, and because they do, I will be fine. Going back to the main event, the World Series of Poker main event has started being televised last Tuesday, and I watched both episodes. Uh, the first one with Scotty in the main the final ta at the feature table, and the second one with E-Dog and, um, at the feature table, as long as with Daniel at the second table. Uh, I just wanted to go over my my opinion on the coverage of it. Um, as much as I like Norman Chad as a person, and I always even thought that he was kind of corny and funny, um, uh, when is enough enough uh, with the picking on Scotty? Um, I thought it was just, they, they, they mentioned his behavior at the horse tournament ten times in the first one minute and thirty seconds of the show. Uh, and then they 
clip together a piece uh, talking about the horse tournament in which his interview wasn't even talking about the horse tournament. It was talking about his main event meltdown last year, but yet they spliced it together in like a hundred different splices, moving word to word to word to make it look like he wasn't sorry about how he acted in the tournament. And then Norman Chad gets back on and says, oh, that doesn't sound like a guy that was really apologetic about how he acted. You know, so I want everybody out there to know that that is some real low-life television reporting to have to splice together uh, an interview that didn't even happen uh, and make it look like he didn't care. Because Scotty does care about his reputation. He does care how he acted. And uh, like I said, he got drunk and he made some mistakes. You know, why harp and hold it against him uh, the whole show, they didn't need to do that, and I was kind of against that. Uh, also leading back into the second episode, um, in which they talk uh, about E-Dog, uh, and, and once again, Eric is one of my very best friends. I love Eric to death, and I love Daniel to death. It just goes to show you like what ESPN goes out in the way to do. I mean, they try to make Eric into this hero, great super guy, which he is a great super guy, uh, and uh, so... And they, they try and make this, uh, uh, it's just amazing how they, how they go out of the way to make somebody look and make another person look. Uh, I think it was kind of funny how they kept Daniel in the whole one hour of the show, uh, which goes to show you what I was saying last week is 13 and a half hours of coverage on Scotty, they put an hour and 20 minutes in of garbage. Daniel was out in the third hour of the main event, uh, yet they put in a whole hour of coverage on Daniel. Uh, and make it look like he was there to the end of the day, um, which was kind of stupid. And uh, that's my assessment on ESPN National TV and how they make people look, and they can make people look any way they want. And uh, lucky for me, they like me now, and they don't make me look bad, and I try to make myself look good to not look bad. So that's what's going on there with the main event. We're going to talk about Poker Savvy Plus, seven-day free trial, Mike the Mouth videos, Poker Savvy Plus, and uh, this week I recorded a four-hour play a tournament with Mike the Mouth Mattiso, and also four hours of live Omaha 8 or better, which I found a way to record, save, download, and somehow, some way, it got erased. So uh, I put in four hours of hard work for nothing, it got erased, and it sucks. So there's going to be more stuff coming out. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to recover this uh, tournament uh, from Full Tilt and uh, at least send that out. Um, so I apologize for that, folks. Uh, Poker Savvy Plus, www.pokersavvyplus.com. The Hand of the Week is brought to you by FullTiltPoker.com. That's where I play poker. Poker Savvy Plus, that's where I make poker videos. And SkinIndustries.com, www.SkinIndustries.com. Buy some Skin skin t-shirts. And uh, my Hand of the Week will be my bust-out Hand of the Week on Full Tilt Poker's Horse Tournament Sunday night, in which I played four hours to find myself with pocket queens in the stud round. The king raises, the nine called, I re-raise it. We were playing 1,500 and 3,000 blind. Um, the king called the re-raise. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, eight, eight and 1,600 blind. I'm sorry. And uh, the, uh, so he made it, raised it up to, to 1,800. Uh, he made it, he called. I made it 1,600. He called, he called. To make a long story short, um, I don't know, maybe it was fifteen and three thousand. I'm not sure, but I found a way to get seventeen thousand five hundred in by Sixth Street. On uh, Fourth Street, the seven hit the seven of diamonds. King seven of diamonds. The nine hit the six. I hit a four. King seven of diamonds bet. The nine six called. I raised. The king seven of diamonds called. The other guy called Fifth Street. The other guy hits a seven. King seven hits a deuce. I hit the queen. I got three queens, they checked to me, I bet, fold, the king seven folded, which I thought he had a flush draw, which I'm happy to see him fold, nine, six, seven raises me, I re-raise, he called, sixth street, he hits a, a king, I hit a blank, he checks, I bet, he check raises me all in, I think it was uh, uh, 3,000 or 2,400. I call with my three queens, and he flips over the six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
and I lost 17,800, uh, which I was 12th in ships with 25 to go, and bubbled the tournament of where they paid 24 places. That's my hand of the week. Uh, pretty disgusting way to go out on the bubble uh, with three queens versus a guy they called three bets pre with, with eight, nine, ten. Instead, hi, oh, no suit. Wonderful. That's my hand of the week. Okay, everybody, let's light up the phone lines. Hit it. Welcome to the mouthpiece. It's Mike. Hey, Mike. Scott calling from Texas. How are you, brother? What's going on, man? Hey, I was talking with your brother earlier. We were um, talking about, I want to get your ideas on uh, Scotty Wynn's behavior at that 50K horse. What do you think about that? Well, I, I, I basically, if you watched the show last week, I, I pretty much straightened out the way I felt about it. And... And that was it. Uh, I missed it. Well, you got to go back to my... I talked about it on the show last week, uh, and exclusively uh, how I felt about it. And uh, and I uh, I also don't like uh, how Norman Chad and ESPN portrayed him in the main event first day uh, on Tuesday. Um, how they spliced together an interview that wasn't even... That wasn't even talked about in the horse tournament, and they just broke it into like a hundred pieces to make it look like he was talking about the horse tournament, and they really smeared him even more. And I just think that that's just really sad, sad TV that they have to go that far. Uh, to really, smear they were somebody. digging to try to make good TV out of nothing. Well, they 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 kept smearing and bringing up the horse tournament uh, on the on the first day of the main event, and he had already apologized. He had already talked about it, you know, to people, and and. Uh, Yet they had an interview that they had done with Scotty, talking about uh, last year's meltdown, and they they spliced it into like 500 pieces, and they took all kinds of words out of that interview, and they put it together to make it look like he was talking about the horse tournament, and he wasn't apologizing for how he acted, and and uh, it, it was pretty gross. It was uh, it was yeah. really to me it was disappointing. I, I took that a uh, that uh, that a company has to stoop that low for ratings, but. Hey, uh, it is what it is, and uh, uh, I just uh, try and act a certain way at a table that I don't get ridiculed on, and uh, then they don't have to. If you, if you don't screw up, you don't get ridiculed, r ripped on, I guess. Yeah, you seem to know where that line is. You know, he he obviously went a little bit beyond that line. You kind of go right to that line where it's still, you know, I'm getting in your head. I'm, you know, I'm a showman, but. Right. I'm not crossing that line. So. Yeah, well, because, I mean, you don't want to be betrayed. In a, you don't want a, people in the American public to think you're an uh, yeah, asshole. At least I, I, really least I don't want to. I, you know, uh, Phil Helmuth likes the people who think he's an asshole. But I, I, <laughs> he's dug that hole too deep, brother. That's all people are ever going to think of him. Yeah, but me, I, I, I care. I, I'm a good guy, and I care about what people think of me. I don't want people to think I'm somebody I'm not, so. Right. Yeah, oh, one more thing your brother wanted me to uh, say to you. He wanted me to tell you, ah, uh, Later. Sorry. All right, bye. Welcome to the mouthpiece. This is Mike. Hey, um, I've noticed, like, on high stakes poker and stuff like that, like, you keep berating the players, yet, like, you try to steal pots. So since they get angry at you, doesn't that mean, like, they'll call you more? Like, I don't understand. Well, I mean, I don't... I don't, the people that I play with on high stakes poker, I played with for 15 years, so I'm really not berating oh, them know. to get them to call me more or to, to anything. I'm really berating them more or less out of fun <laughs> because yeah. they're just so much fun to make fun of. Because yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it's just fun to make fun of Phil Helmuth when he's just talking like an idiot, and yeah. you know, or or Daniel when he when he thinks he knows everything and. You know, plays like I just like to make fun of them. It's just fun. So, uh, yeah. so basically, you know, everybody you see there are just people I play with for years. So it's um, it's real easy to 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 have fun. It's almost like a home game because these are people that I've hung yeah. out, went you know, drinking with, and we used to hang out together and just play played in home. Actually, played together so many times. So it's it's uh, when All you're right. in like something like a home game atmosphere, you could pretty much uh, uh, say whatever you want, and it's more like a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh. All right, well, that's it. All right, man. Well, thanks for the call. Call me anytime. Right, Later. Yep. Hey, bye. Welcome to the mouthpiece. This is Mike. Hey, what's up, Mike? What up, man? Hey, this is from Illinois. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, not much, man. I was just wondering, uh, 
exact date for when your book was coming out? Autobiography? Uh, my autobiography will be out May 19th. Um, May 19th? Yeah, and uh, we have uh, been uh, working real hard at it, and uh, actually the, the writers have been over the last week, and uh, uh, we have uh, like four more chapters to finish. Pretty much the, the book's all done, but we're outlining the other chapters, and... Uh, uh, we, we've actually, uh, they've actually read five chapters to me over the last five days, and uh, so far it, it just seems like it's just going to be an amazing book. Uh, I'm, I'm absolutely 100% convinced that not only will it be a, a best-selling book, but it'll be a, a, a big-time movie. So, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I really hope it does get made in a Hollywood movie. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It's actually an, an incredible, incredible. The, the writing is, is just awesome. I'm, I mean, uh, I'm really happy how good they're writing. So. Sounds good, man. Hey, Ford, you got time for one more question? Yeah. yeah I was just wondering, I've been like seeing these, like online videos, like just see how people play, you know, like these online players, the like, card runners and stuff, and I'm right. also a member of Poker Savvy. Right. And uh, I see these players like making these plays like with King out of the small blind, like three betting out of the small blind, and just for the simple reason they think of the, that player's range. Like, what's your stance on plays? Like, I mean, but I, uh, I don't. I'm not. I don't play like that. Uh, they, if some, you know, if somebody wants to raise my blind, and which has quarter twenty five dollars in it or fifty dollars in it, you know, they could just take it. You know, I don't need yeah. to come over the top of them with king ten out of position, and uh, and then they call and then what do I do? You know, um, I disagree with those plays. Uh, I disagree with ninety percent of how those. People play online. Um, uh, it might work online where you can't see anybody, uh, but it's going to. There, there, there's a certain way to play poker and a certain way to not play poker. And I played enough no limit hold'em in my lifetime to know that you've got to play fundamentally sound, and you have to uh, play the player. Uh, but playing hands like that out of position is really going to just bury you. That's thinking too i kind of disagree with those plays but these guys are supposed to be like you know hard as you know like all i know is like not to not to knock anybody or card runners or anybody is look at all the people that you see writing videos okay out of all the people you ever seen doing videos okay beside me or daniel have you ever heard of anybody else okay has you ever seen anybody else be successful you know what I mean, they went online or in videos online you know, or do yeah, they win like online? It seems like when they make those plays, like they just like hit lightning, hit it every time on the river. It's like they, they look like, they look like look superstars like when they catch cards. You know, it, <laughs> you know. But I tell everybody like all the time, like even when a guy wins a big pot and and, and I'm friends with him or whatever, and I and I, I am to him in, in the instant message box that I'll say like, wow, you played that like, shit. you know. And he's like, well, what do you mean or whatever? I go, I don't care if you won the pot. Look at the hand history. Look what you're up against. You know, so I always like to tell people, you know, if you if you analyze your hand versus his hand, where you were pre-flop when you guys got like four bets in or whatever, you were like two and a half to one dog or two to one dog or even 64 percent, you know, you're a dog and you put all this money in. And so, you know, I, I'm not a, a results oriented guy. I'm, I'm more of a, uh, you know, play correctly and and good things will happen. And. You watch so many people that are so results oriented. I mean, you hear so much about, oh, look what this guy's won, look what this guy's won. Oh, you say you people say he's not such a good player, but look what all the money he's won. I mean, online and look at go to High Stakes Report, look what he's won. I'm like, I don't care what he's won. I've been around 15 years. I watched them all come and go. I watched them all go broke. I, I know who can play. Yeah, who, I, I know who years. can play and who can't play. And if I say they're going to go broke, they're going to go broke. So, uh, and I don't think I've ever been wrong on that. So. That's the bottom line. Okay. All, right, All right, man. I appreciate the call. Appreciate call me right, anytime. Man. You got it. Bye. Bye. Well, I hope you all enjoyed our show today. Kind of a little bit disappointing, only getting four phone calls. Uh, I uh, would like to hear from you guys. And now that I'm not going to be here for a month, uh, it's kind of going to suck a little bit. But uh, I, uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoy the show. I appreciate you guys calling in. And for all my fans out there, thank you so much. And this is Mike the Mouth Matter. So from the mouthpiece, we're out of here. <laughs>